So what I've done right here is I'm, I take the uh, face plate off the furnace here and I'm looking throughout the uh, furnace cabinet, uh, checking the filter to make sure it's clean and also looking at the inside of the blower wheel, which is this right here, to see how dusty or corroded it might be. Um, whenever the, the blower wheel gets covered with dust, it basically reduces the amount of airflow that can go through it, and so the overall efficiency of the furnace gets reduced. But um, this wheel looks like it's fairly clean. I don't really see a whole lot of deposits on there. Uh, I would recommend every several couple years, two, three, four years, if it does get dirty, to actually pull the blower wheel out and clean it off with soap and water. Um, it'll help keep your duct system clean, help keep allergens out of your house, and it'll help um, increase the longevity, the life of the furnace itself. So, not to mention it'll make it a little bit more efficient. We're outside right now uh, testing the efficiency of the furnace uh, at Kelly's house, and we're using a combustion analyzer. This is a, the Testo model 327, and basically we're letting the furnace run and I've got the combustion analyzer reading the flue gas that's coming outside. Um, it's reading about 25 to 30 parts per million right now, which is still within acceptable levels. And especially since it's vented directly to the outdoors, I'm not worrying about it spilling inside the house. And um, what it also tells me is the temperature of the flue gas at steady state, as well as the, any carbon monoxide production that might be happening and the efficiency of the burn itself. So right now it says that the furnace is actually burning the gas at 97.5% efficient, which is just about as good as you can ask for. I mean, it can get a little bit more efficient, but for a 10-year-old furnace, it's not too bad. So uh, I'm happy with that, and we're going to move on to the next step. So we're out here at the gas meter using the gas sniffer. I've already found two leaks, verified it, marked it with the orange tape so that the lg &E will actually come out and fix this for you for free. Uh, because it's before the meter, so got it marked off for Kelly. So Kelly, now we're done with your audit. We've gone through the whole process, um, found some maybe surprising things, a lot of things you probably expected. Mm -hmm. um, what did you take away from the audit? What did you learn the most? Well, definitely it, it's thoroughness. When you really think about it, you know, when you live in a home, especially an older home, I think that you know, there's going to be leaks, there's going to be problems. You know that you probably need more insulation, things like that. And, and again, I was aware of that before you came out, but there's a lot of misconceptions with audits. Oh gosh, am I embarrassed to have Eric come out to check to my house to see if it's leaky. That's, it's only going to help you to call an energy rater and, yeah. and find these things out. So yes, it's a little embarrassing, but yet, you know, it, it can only help my utility bills my comfort level and my indoor air quality. So when you really think about it, these audits are terrific and definitely worth the money because he's gonna be able to tell me what exactly I need to do, what's the best bang for my buck, and, and how to proceed the next step. So, so instead, okay. of, instead of you paying somebody you know, $1,000 to blow the attic, you could probably spend that money elsewhere or prioritize what you want to do. Exactly. And uh, get the most bang for your buck. That's right, awesome. that's right. So thank you, you're, I appreciate you're it. You're welcome, <laughs> thank you for calling me out. Thanks. <laughs>